Hey, fourth grade, today we're doing two pages and our lesson is module five, lesson five. We're gonna continue to decompose our fractions like we have for the past few lessons, but this time we're gonna utilize a tool called an area model. So today's lesson is called Decomposing Fractions on an Area Model. Take a moment to fill in your table of contents and when you are ready to go, press play. Similar to the lessons before, our objective is that we can decompose fractions into smaller equivalent fractions. But today we're gonna to be using tools called an area model and we're gonna represent that decomposition with a multiplication sentence. Because the goal of math is to be really efficient, to find the quickest and easiest way to accomplish a task. And even though repeated addition is a great tool, multiplication is a more efficient tool. So let's start in with this tape diagram a tool that we are most familiar with, and we're gonna shade in four fifths on that tape diagram. My tape diagram, which represents one whole, has been broken into one, two, three, four, five equal pieces already, fifths. And now I need to shade in four of them. One, two, three, four. To review some of the lessons from the day prior, four-fifths is equivalent to one-fifth or times. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna finish this addition sentence. Four-fifths equals one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. I have typo on my sheet. Yours will be fixed by the time you're filling this in, but I'm going to cross these out because I only have one, two, three, four fifths shaded in on my tape diagram. Four fifths is equivalent to one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth. But that's not new information for you. You've already practiced that skill. So let's make it more efficient. How can we represent this same repeated addition sentence, but instead use multiplication? Remember that multiplication symbols are just a fancy way of saying the words groups of. Four-fifths is blank groups of one-fifth. How many groups of one-fifth are equivalent to four-fifths? One, two, three, four. I have four groups of one-fifth. So what's the missing factor, the missing number that I multiply? Four-fifths is four groups of one-fifth. Let's practice this skill again, but with five-eighths. Now our tape diagram represents one whole unit broken into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal pieces representing eighths. Shade in five-eighths. One, two, three, four, and five. Similar to last time, I'm gonna represent this in a repeated addition sentence, where each unit is added up to equal five eighths. One shaded unit is the same as one of eight pieces plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth. So again, how can we make this more efficient? Adding up one eighth five times is correct, but it does take longer than we need to. Instead, we can compact this into how many groups of one eighth we have. I have one, two, three, four, five. Remember multiplication means groups of five groups of one eighth because each of these units represents one eighth. So let's fill in the factor. Five eighths is, five eighths is five groups of one eighth. So now on the next page, let's see how we can use multiplication when we decompose a fraction. 
Remember when we decompose, we create smaller equivalent fractions to the first original fraction, which means we have lots more smaller units. That would create longer repeated addition sentences, and today is all about being efficient. Can we use multiplication to make those repeated addition sentences even more efficient? Let's see. We have a list of steps that we're going to follow through. First, I noticed that I have a tape diagram that's been stretched out. This is going to become our area model. Tape diagrams have units that are broken one row at a time, while in area model, we can have multiple columns and rows going at once. So you're going to see how these tape diagrams are going to turn into area models on this page. Step one, let's shade one fifth. This whole area model is one whole, broken into one, two, three, four, five equal fifths. So let's shade in one of those fifths. Now that I have one out of my five pieces shaded in, I'm gonna go to step two. Draw a horizontal line to decompose the whole into two equal rows. So I'm going to draw a horizontal, meaning a line that runs side to side, almost like a line of symmetry through this area model. And now I have two rows, one row, two rows. What is your new shaded fraction? Earlier, I had one out of five pieces shaded in. But now I notice that I have more than five pieces in my entire tape diagram. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of that tape diagram. And now two of them, one, two, are shaded in. My new shaded fraction is two tenths, two out of 10 pieces. Even though my fraction has changed, did the area of our shaded piece change at all? Did more shading pop up? Did less shading pop up? No, it's still the same shading that was there before. It's only been decomposed into smaller pieces. No, it has not changed which means that one-fifth is equivalent to two-tenths. One-fifth equals two-tenths. How can we represent two-tenths in a repeated addition sentence? I have one-tenth plus one more-tenth. One tenth plus one tenth equals two tenths. And since two tenths and one fifth are equivalent fractions, that also means that one fifth equals one tenth plus one tenth. How can we make this efficient by using multiplication? How many groups of one tenth came together to form one fifth? One fifth is equivalent to two groups of one tenth. Two shaded one tenth pieces. That was kind of a weird skill, so let's practice it again. This time we have a new area model where the whole is broken into one, two, three equal pieces, thirds. So step one, I'm gonna shade in one of those thirds. Last time I drew horizontal lines, but I already have an area model with horizontal lines. I already have rows. So this time I'm going to create columns. Draw vertical lines to decompose the whole into four equal columns. I want to create four equal columns, which means I want to break this into fourths vertically. 
I'm going to start by drawing one line that goes down the center vertically. And now I have two equal pieces. Then I'm going to take each of these halves and split them in half. Even though I only drew three lines, I now have four columns. One, two, three, four. Before, I had one out of three pieces shaded. One piece out of three. One, two, three. But with our columns, you probably noticed that I have a lot more than three equal pieces in this area model. I now have an area model that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve equal pieces. Of those twelve equal pieces, I have one, two, three, four of them that are shaded in. So my new shaded fraction is four twelfths. Just like the last time, did you notice that the shaded area changed at all? Even though we've decomposed it and the fraction is different, it didn't create more or less shading. The amount of shading that's there is the same amount that was there before we drew those columns. So even though the fraction changed, did the area of our shaded space change? No. This is still technically the same amount of shading as one third. So when we represent that repeated addition sentence for four twelfths, it would be saying that we're representing the same repeated addition sentence as one third. Let's break one third into the sum of all of these twelfths. One third equals one twelfth plus one twelfth plus one twelfth plus one twelfth. As great as that repeated addition sentence is, remember the goal is that we become efficient. We find the quickest and simplest way to represent this information. And even though this is correct, it does take time for us to say 1 12th plus 1 12th plus 1 12th plus 1 12th. So instead, we'll turn it into a multiplication sentence. How many groups, 1, 2, 3, 4, are there of twelfths? We have four groups of, and each unit represents one twelfth. So now it's your turn on your problem set to decompose your area models and create multiplication sentences that represent those smaller fractional units. Good luck.